In 1861, as the Civil War began, the United States was not an industrial nation. It had manufacturing, but mainly in the North, and it lagged far behind Britain, France, and Germany in industry. Just 30 years later, industrial production in the United States almost equaled that of Britain, France, and Germany combined. How did this change happen so fast? New inventions and natural resources helped, as well as a growing labor force of millions of unskilled laborers from Europe and Asia. Businesses expanded into corporations, and investors and entrepreneurs changed the face of the American economy. Competition was fierce, as companies such as Kellogg's and Post Cereals came on the scene. Coca-Cola, Hershey, Singer, General Motors, Ford Corporation, Bell Telephone, Edison Electric, a few of these should sound familiar. The men who ran these companies became extremely wealthy. Some of these companies became uber wealthy, like Bill Gates wealthy, or Oprah wealthy. The wealthiest business leader at the turn of the 20th century was none other than John Davison Rockefeller. He's the man who owns Standard Oil of Ohio. He was the fiercest of the fierce in business competition. He put competitors out of business and created a monopoly called the Standard Oil Trust. He used a variety of methods to put his competitors out of business and take over the entire oil industry. Don't forget, an industry is made up of businesses. For example, the fast food industry is comprised of many competing businesses, such as these that you see here. Rockefeller's industry was oil. He figured out a way to refine oil cheaply so that it can burn. Before that, oil was used to lubricate moving parts. Rockefeller and other refiners were making oil to run machines. Rockefeller is not the father of gasoline. His first refined oil was kerosene for burning lamps. He sold a lot of it to China. It's hard to believe, but maybe we can. America, under Rockefeller's refining business, was the number one exporter of oil in the late 1800s. 50% of Standard Oil's oil was exported. Oil fields were first discovered in Pennsylvania, but Standard Oil got its start in Cleveland, Ohio. However, later, Rockefeller had oil refineries in Pennsylvania, New York, New York, and New Jersey. People flocked to oil towns for work in these states, and later to Texas, just like they did in mining rushes and land rushes. Rockefeller was the first billionaire in our country. He is still one of the top ten richest men of all time. His fortune amassed to $4 billion by the time he died at 98 years old. Most of us dream to be millionaires. Rockefeller achieved our dream 4,000 times. John D. Rockefeller was a very industrious industrialist. He is just another example of the American dream. From the time he was a young boy, he was in the business of making money. When he was seven, he raised turkeys and sold them for a profit. He gave part of the profit to charity. This was an early example of Rockefeller's philanthropy. As a teenager, he worked as a clerk in a food company. What money he made, he invested. That's when you use your money to make money. By the time he was 20, he owned his own food company. Everything he made, he put back into his business. During the Civil War, Rockefeller invested in oil that could be used to burn for lighting instead of candles. He also understood that oil could be used for fuel. Rockefeller began buying crude oil from the ground. He processed the oil, refining it from crude oil that was cheap to lamp oil that was expensive. He made a very good profit. He wasted nothing. The best parts of the crude oil were turned into kerosene, and the rest was sold as paraffin wax and petroleum jelly. Yes, Rockefeller is the father of Vaseline. Rockefeller began the Standard Oil Company of Ohio in 1870. His firm grew rapidly because of demand for oil but also because Rockefeller wanted to control all parts of the oil business and the entire oil industry. He practiced the strategies of horizontal and vertical integration. Hor horizontal integration is destroying your competition through buyouts and by dropping your prices so low that you take away customers from competing firms. People accused Rockefeller of being a bully and that his business practices were unfair. Rockefeller started buying out other oil firms and hired their top men. 
If firms would not sell to him, he cut prices so low that he took away their customers and ran them out of business. John D. Rockefeller never took no for an answer. Once his competition was out of the oil industry, Rockefeller set the prices of barrels of oil to whatever he wanted. Vertical integration was a strategy Rockefeller used as well. He bought companies and products that went into Standard Oil. For example, he bought his own wagons, oil barrels, oil fields, and pipeline. This allowed Rockefeller to further drop the price of his oil, making it harder and harder for other oil companies to compete. In addition to this, Rockefeller also received special discounts from railroad companies for shipping his oil. These are called rebates. He would make arrangements with railroads, such as a line on the New York Central line, to ship only standard oil barrels. Railroads gave him discounts for shipping a certain number of barrels through their line and set, pr set their prices higher for other companies. By the way, you probably haven't thought of this before, but that shirt you are wearing now costs a certain amount of money. And yes, shipping costs are included. If his shipping costs were also lower than his competitors and the price of oil barrels drop even further, it's not hard to see that Standard Oil would monopolize the oil industry. At one point, Standard Oil controlled 90% of the industry. Rockefeller ran into problems with the government and the courts because Standard Oil Trust became a monopoly. Monopolies are illegal in this country today, primarily because once they gain competitors, customers, they can set prices any way they want. Uh, today, many lawsuits have been levied against monopolies or companies that dominate an industry. For example, Microsoft was found guilty in several antitrust lawsuits, and currently, Google is facing the same antitrust litigation. Please pay attention to the news and see what happens. Rockefeller did not believe that government should regulate business. He believed in hands-off or laissez-faire economics. But at the time, a law was passed called the Sherman Antitrust Act, which was later strengthened by the Clayton Antitrust Act. Both of these laws declared monopolies illegal because competition is healthy in a free enterprise system like the United States. Competition keeps prices low and quality of products good. These laws also address the cheating with the railroads and rebates. Rockefeller thought he would never be prosecuted because the law was too vague, and for several years his Standard Oil Company continued to grow by absorbing smaller companies or buying up the stock in competing firms. That was until a woman named Ida Tarbell, whose father and brother were put out of business by Rockefeller, wrote about Standard Oil's unfair practices in McClure's magazine. Ida was called a muckraker by Teddy Roosevelt, and after her writing, more people paid attention to Rockefeller's trust. She wrote a book called The History of Standard Oil. In 1911, the Supreme Court found that the Standard Oil of New Jersey was operating illegally in the way it competed against other oil firms. The court ordered Standard Oil to be split up into 34 separate companies. Believe it or not, companies like Exxon, Mobil, and BP all come from this antitrust decision. But Rockefeller's wealth was not affected by this decision. In fact, though he was not actively running any of the Standard Oil firms, he continued to make money because he owned stock in all of the newly formed firms. Like many wealthy people, Rockefeller was quite frugal when it came to his own life. Yes, he owned many houses, but he dressed simply and enjoyed things like raising roses and playing golf. As an older gentleman, he summarized his life by saying, I was early taught to work as well as play. My life has been one long, happy holiday, full of work and full of play. I dropped the worry on the way, and God was good to me every day. Rockefeller and his wife had four sons. They did not believe in excess. In fact, all four of his children shared one bicycle. Rockefeller and his wife donated lots of money to charitable organizations, finding cures for medical problems and also to help African Americans. Rockefeller's wife was from the Spellman family. When she died 20 years before he did, he donated millions of dollars to an African American college and asked that it be named Spelman College in her honor. 
Rockefeller also had modern ideas for a businessman of his time. He was concerned about the environmental impact of Standard Oil and spent his own money to dispose of waste products rather than just dumping them in rivers or in the ground, which was standard practice at the time. Rockefeller was a great philanthropist, opening a settlement home in Cleveland in Little Italy and giving more than $750 million to charities. That's $32 trillion today. Today, the Rockefeller name belongs in American lore with that of the Kennedys and the Vanderbilts. Their continued donations to charity have inspired places such as the Rockefeller Center to be named after them. Many people thought of Rockefeller as a kind-hearted old man, a captain of his industry who moved America into the position of power and wealth and the envy of other nations. Others thought of Rockefeller as a ruthless man driven by greed a robber baron who exploited others and practiced business tactics that did more harm than good. What do you think?